people who attended. Thank you for yeah for paying your attention and joining to this call. Uh, let me share my presentation actually. And briefly introduce myself here. Yeah, but just uh, before I start, please let me know if you can see the presentation. Yes, ever since yes. I okay, uh, cool. So uh, let me briefly introduce myself. I work as a business intelligence developer here at SoftServe, um, have more than 10 years of experience and um, actually started as a database developer, but then moved to business intelligence area. I worked with a few uh, BI platforms and my last few projects, uh, they were with um, Looker. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about analytics uh, governance uh, with Looker. And this presentation is for um, those uh, BI developers who uh, may already have may already had some experience with the looker yet developing looker project but uh, are not familiar with the hub and spokes uh, concept in looker because at the time when i passed a looker certification this was not uh, this topic was not included there so i just thought that that may be interesting to to talk about um yeah, and a um, small remark, uh, it's funny enough that uh, when I was asked to uh, prepare some talk at um, engineering community, I thought that um, this month would be calmer in my life, but as um, I'm based in Ukraine and uh, as um, many people here um, had lots of sleepless nights, so just in case my face would freeze for a moment, uh, don't worry. That's uh, most probably not with um, not about losing internet connection. That's most probably I'm just collecting my thoughts and <laughs> picking myself into place. Um, so let's start. Um, the agenda would be about why do we um, need at all um, some analytics governance? Uh, what Looker can offer, uh, how it can be implemented, yeah, and I will have some demo and uh, Q&A session uh, in the end. Um, the topic, uh, the uh, talk would not only be about um, technical aspects, yeah, uh, of uh, implementing Hub and Spoke in Looker, but also about some company and organizational aspects. So uh, what is the problem, yeah, why, why do we need analytics governance? A data analytics market uh, is rapidly growing and as we all know with the growth not only opportunities come ar arrive here yeah, but also some challenges um, moreover uh, there may be more challenges if uh, like if the growth is not controllable and when speaking about um, analytics yeah environment of, of the organization uh, if you uh, don't control it at all and you experience fast scaling and fast growth, um, there is a high chance that uh, it will turn you, uh, your organization, uh, your, your analytics environment into some chaos. Uh, and at some point, uh, business users, uh, managers here yeah, will um, ask, why do we have like five different answers? to the same question yeah when we for example and trying to understand the revenue of the company or some some other metric um depending on uh, which dashboard we're looking at uh, or which department we're talking to so that lead uh, that leads to lack of trust in data and uh, because you have like multiple versions of truth and uh, also it opens up uh, a list of risks um, your organization may be exposed to because there may be some uh, legislative requirements to report some data publicly and uh, if you report different figures for uh, different answers yet yeah, to the same question different figures for the same metric um, you uh, someone eventually will spot it and uh, you will uh, spend extra efforts to understand why it's different, what is the root cause, who is accountable for it, etc. Uh, on the other side, if you introduce uh, uh, like 100 uh, governant, uh, if, if you make your environment 100% uh, uh, governed, uh, it will uh, it, it will 
become a bottleneck yeah it would not help uh, the organization to uh, to scale or growth it would kill creativity it will it it can bring uh, to stagnation yeah if you have like um all the models and analytics predefined and no one can change anything you're like zero flexibility uh, it will also increase uh, kind of time to market yeah for business units so that will be um another issue and the sweet spot is uh, as it's always in the balance um it's about governed flexibility so uh, the analytics governance uh, governance should not be um kind of autocracy yeah it should uh, instead harness the creativity yeah and uh, allow the organization to to scale uh, grow and fulfill um uh, different units uh, needs without uh, creating unnecessary um, bottlenecks. So what can uh, Looker offer to um, conduct faster, more accurate analysis and business decisions? You may have heard uh, that the term hub and spokes in uh, different technologies. Yeah, and for each technology, it might mean some something unique yeah to the technology uh, but the main concept uh, um it's um, like the same yeah the basic concept hub is about controlling the central piece of uh, information and um spokes are kind of consumers uh of the hub information and at the same time um they cannot they can enrich that information change to their own needs extend etc but um, it's important that they cannot push back the changes upstream to the hub and um, that's actually uh, what can be done in um, looker using uh, its um, project import feature uh, it's worth to say that uh, project import feature uh, was not designed specifically to um, hub and spoke uh, implementation uh, it can be used in um, different cases uh, but uh, for today we'll talk about uh, hub and spoke so um, technically uh, it's um, quite easy to set up quite straightforward i would say uh, but when we speak um, about organizationally yeah um, it's not that easy and uh, everyone should understand that uh, that is um, kind of a significant cultural uh, change. Uh, so how would we start here yeah, investigating this area? First of all, we would need to uh, kind of set the stage. Uh, it would be good for you to understand um, at what level at all uh, your organization, your customer uh, is uh, in terms of um, data literacy, data governance. Um, for analytics governance, it's good to have a separate um, analytics governan bo governance board uh, where it's um, kind of important to include uh, not only executive sponsors, but also representatives from um, maybe not all, but at least main uh, business units in order to um, ignite this uh, uh, collaboration here, yeah, communication in order to be able to uh, listen because uh, listen to other teams as well and not focusing uh, purely on setting some um, I don't know, mythic hub model, yeah, but something that can bring value and be uh, reusable. Uh, so uh, initiating some regular analytics governance meetings would be needed and uh, involvement of those representatives would be needed. Um, you would need to identify um, some initial um, use cases here yeah, to identify uh, what teams already struggle with to discuss metrics that have a potential to be reused and put into the hub. Um, I have not added uh, to this slide, but uh, it's um, important uh, also to understand what data environment uh, in, in the organization already looks like. Yeah, How many databases are there, whether it's centralized or not, how many uh, SQL dialects are there, etc. Uh, and uh, 
as well, like how, how it's governed already, yeah, whether there are some policies, whether there are already some reusable assets, uh, how is um, data sharing uh, being conducted. You would need to identify initial hub owners, yeah, and understand the capacities of, uh, if we're talking about um, I would say developers, uh, yeah, like whether the business units already have their own Looker developers or it's kind of centralized analytics team. And after that, uh, when you already found some um, new use case and start um, implementing, yeah, start building the hub model when you understand why would you need it, yeah, what benefit it would bring, um, it's important to take, I would say, one step at a time and progress slow. Um, analyze usage metrics, see how it goes. Uh, getting feedback from uh, cons from your consu from hub consumer, right? And um, if there is some success, uh, to not be shy and share those success stories and what benefit uh, it it brought, uh, because um, usually uh, people are. Um, can can be scared yeah of something unknown uh they uh may be hesitant you know to, uh, resistant or reluctant yet yeah, to um to try something new uh, just uh, because they would be afraid you know to that it would uh, slow down their progress or um i don't know the, prevent them from reaching um their goals but if you share the success, it would help you to uh, get the buy-in and increase this collaboration communication. Uh, for setting up the hub uh, project in Looker, um, let's imagine uh, that um, it, it can be actually, there can be many cases. Yeah, Looker is quite flexible about it. That It can be a, a single hub project uh, with one model in it. Uh, it can be um, several hub projects. Uh, it can be a hub project with uh, several models. It, it all depends on the this prerequisite analysis that, you, that you've done. Um, what you need to do, you would need to set up a project um, in Looker. You would need to grant access to you. Let's imagine that there is just one model, yeah, core model in 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 it. You would need to grant access to uh, to this model to hub owners. Uh, it can be restricted so that hub owners can see only um, hub model or non restricted so that uh, they can see um, the explores and uh, like the the data in different projects yeah in, in spoke projects uh, you would need to set up some code style uh, conventions uh, because your hub should be um, kind of iconic yeah um, um, environment uh, ready to be reused it should not look like a mess and uh, there may uh, you may uh, you may want to use some additional um, tools to to make it uh, to improve, you know, continuous integration and improve the uh, style, like do the styling checks automatically. Um, you would need to set up a code repository uh, to have more manageable deployment process. Uh, maybe even set up a team who would have a permission actually yet to to merge pull requests, etc. Uh, so there is some additional work would be required for that. Um, and well, the advice also is to create explorers in separate files and at all uh, follow the all the general uh, best practices here in developing uh, dry lookML uh, using block structure, etc. Uh, it's important to remember that model file. Uh, cannot be imported, so that is why it's uh, good to, to keep explores uh, separately. And of course, everything shall be uh, documented. So in Looker, you can uh, set up a home page for different user groups. Yeah, so that means that you are able to provide the uh, kind of landing page for spokes users, for uh, spoke developers. Yeah, if you have and for hub developers as well. So that would help with um, speeding up the onboarding. And uh, since the hub is um, 
designed to be reused, you would need to plan the communication of changes to the core model because changes can be breaking for spokes. And if, um, for example, hub developers have restricted access yet to hub, they will not be able uh, to check um, which content was uh, broken after the release, uh, which spoke content was broken after the release. Um, for spoke development, development, once we set up the hub, we can import um, uh, that hub project here yeah, into uh, the spoke, into some business unit uh, dedicated project in Looker. Uh, for this, uh, as I mentioned, there is a project import feature in Looker. Uh, it can be either remote or local. And there are some um, differences here yeah, between them. So I will start with local dependency. Um, it's easier to set up, much easier uh, on the right um, on the right hand on the right side. You can see um, that you're just providing project name, uh, which you'd like to import and uh, override in some constants if it's needed uh, that are related to the connection. The, of views in that Looker model. Um, this feature is possible to use only when you have both uh, hub and spokes on the same uh, Looker instance. Uh, in order to use that feature, uh, local dependency, um, you would need to, uh, like ad admin would need to enable it on Looker project. Uh, there are some um, limitations here, yeah, as I mentioned, that, that it should be one um, instance, but uh, also you are always like pointed to uh, production unless you have developer access to uh, the hub model. And um, if there are some changes to, to the hub and uh, you don't have yeah, a developer, well, at all, yeah. If, you, if there are some changes to the hub, you will not be alerted about it. And moreover, Looker says that uh, yeah, it, it can expire with some time. So it's a bit risky, but it's uh, easy to, to use. For uh, remote project import, um, it's a bit, um, just a bit uh, harder to implement. Yeah, you just need a bit to write a bit uh, a few more lines of code, uh, but it would open you uh, the opportunities to, uh, to, to to have more control over what you actually importing from the hub. And also it will uh, notify you about uh, changes uh, in the hub model. So uh, it, it's also possible to um, use, um, to have hub on one Looker instance and spoke on other Looker instances, instances because it's not uh, dependent on the instance. It's basically about importing uh, code repository. Yeah, so you would need to uh, import credentials from the um, to, to, to connect to Hub repository uh, for read access, and uh, also would be able to control uh, which version uh, you are importing from the Hub. So it may be just a master branch, or you can use commit SHA, et cetera. And uh, also you will have this alert uh, when there are uh, changes, if you're pointed to the master and the new version was deployed. So once you set up this project import, you've got uh, the code, yeah, the semantic layer of Looker Hub imported to your project for uh, read-only access. And then you can, um, what you can do with that code, yeah, you, and with those metrics, you can reuse them, refine them, or extend them. When reuse, you can you should simply include the file um, into your spoke model. Uh, when refining, uh, you can um, change something here, yeah, override some parameters. Not all of them can be overridden, some are additive, um, but many of them are, and you can provide some uh, labels, um, some even change the, um, I don't know, the descriptions, types, etc. cetera, um, add dimensions to the view, something like that. Uh, for extending, when you're uh, extending LookML code, it means that you are creating um, a copy 
uh, of that object and uh, then you can again uh, change something that you need but it will be like a separate object in in looker model for for, for your own purposes depends what you need and for um, the accompanying tools that I've uh, briefly mentioned uh, before, um, so some of them uh, requires additional setup here yeah, and can be uh, useful, uh, especially for Hub. I have not them. Uh, I have not used them personally. I've just um, recently attended um, some webinar conducted by Spectacles, and they shared their positive uh, feedback about that tool, those tools. That's why I'm sharing it with you. Uh, they would require some additional setup. Uh, the one for um, automatic style checker yeah, and defining the rules for your code conventions. Uh, it's kind of linter uh, called uh, look at me sideways. Um, they also used uh, code owners for code review accountability yeah, and uh, defining some team who can merge the pull requests, etc. And uh, spectacle, uh, Spectacle's continuous integration tool uh, that helped them. Um, as some of you know, uh, you can um, validate uh, your LookML code yeah, uh, using Looker IDE, uh, but uh, it won't val validate some cases, for example, SQL code. Yeah, And for that uh, purpose, uh, Spectacle CI would help you just to make sure that this code will be um, will run in production. And some accompanying tools, uh, kind of organizational, I don't know, um, that are available directly via Looker. This is Looker Data Dictionary. Um, you can provide yeah, descriptions, and it's uh, highly recommended to provide description wherever it's uh, uh, possible for all the fields, uh, uh, explores, etc., in the hub model. And then you can use this data dictionary and um, for checking um, how it's um, after deployment yeah how it's uh, used you can use admin query page or system activity and uh, of course uh, content validator uh, just to understand if there were any dashboards broken after the model was changed And for this, this is uh, time we are for demo. I will stop sharing the presentation and we'll switch to our partner instance. Can you see my screen? A different one? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, good. So uh, it's the top, just, um, um, I don't know, small uh, projects on our par partner instance, uh, just to show how it's actually implemented. Yeah. So I have uh, two um, hub, uh, two projects, uh, one for the hub with one uh, model and one for the spoke. Uh, in uh, project uh, settings, I've configured them to look at uh, different, uh, they are all connected to BigQuery databases and uh, pointed to different uh, GCP projects. And um, the um, idea I had in mind is that uh, this kind of uh, implementation, uh, it supposed that um, there is some data sharing procedure already yeah so some data governance in the in, in the underlying data environment and um, you can um, share the necessary uh, table through some governed procedure to um, the GCP project that uh, some business unit is using to, to kind of um, serve in a presentation later uh, so what we have uh, in the hub mm. the manifest file as usually, uh, I'm using constants here for uh, project and data sets just for um, reusability. You can define uh, the export and actually should define uh, the export um, parameter here. Uh, this would be uh, taken into account when you are importing the hub. So if that uh, those constants um, should be overridden, yeah, maybe overridden, or uh, you can set none here as well. So for project, in my case, um, it will be required because I do want spoke um, 
model uh, to uh, to connect to its uh, own project, but I will change it later. Um, I've included, as usual, I'm stating what connection I'm using um, and included all the explorers and views uh, from this project. Uh, in the views, you can see that I'm using those uh, constants that if I'd like, I will override here in the spoke project. I have not provided any descriptions here, uh, nothing um, that would take some my extra time, you know, but uh, uh, it is important when you're developing hub to not just briefly have uh, raw uh, view yeah, or raw explore that uh, is connected just to one table. Uh, hub will make sense only when you put some analytics um, logic in there. Yeah, uh, when you have, uh, when you predefine how to join the tables, uh, how to calculate some metrics, etc. This is just for uh, demo purposes. So we've got two views, orders and users. And uh, for orders, um, let's start with users. Uh, users is a simple one. It's just connected. Um, it includes um, users view. Um, and you can uh, see in the explore that uh, after deployment, this um, uh, users explore is available from the hub uh, model. You can also, um, if you don't want to have the queryable explore, you can make uh, a template of explore. In that case, you would need to set extension uh, required. And uh, as you may have noticed, you don't see orders here in the dropdown. And if there are some people who uh, don't know what explore is this is kind of um uh, i would say um predefined yeah query uh, uh, that uh, would be useful for some ad hoc analysis so it provides you all the fields that you would like to pull like drag and drop yeah and do some analysis so you can select some country um field dimension yes yeah, some metric and in that way, uh, you would be able to, to see some data. This data is safe to, to share because it's uh, completely synthetic and um, it's taken from public um, BigQuery data set. And you can apply some visualizations immediately from here, save it, export it, et cetera. So that's why we uh, need the explores. And here in the explore, you can see uh, the views that are uh, joined here in that explore. Okay. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, and for um, as I mentioned, for Hub, you would need to set up some policy how you would deploy uh, the code. Uh, you would need to um, edit some project configuration. I have not done it uh, here, but uh, tried on some other project. Uh, pull requests required, yes, yeah, so that it could uh, lead you directly to your, uh, for example, GitHub, yeah, where actually the merges will happen and maybe applying this, uh, using this code owner's tool. Uh, code quality, of course, requires fixing errors and warnings uh, before committing. You can even set up some data tests to pass. Uh, in Looker, it's possible to set up uh, the data tests. And uh, you can enable advanced deploy mode so that it's not automatically uh, deployed to production. Uh, when we're talking about spoke, so let's imagine it's um, set up and we'd like to reuse this in the spoke for uh, own needs. There is a different project. I've called it spoke finance. And um, it also has its own, yeah, as usually manifest. Um, as I mentioned, I had the idea that it's connected to its own GCP project. So uh, I'm using for its own uh, views, uh, the, the project name and data set constants. Uh, and uh, to get, so it can be, um, if uh, we'd like to use local dependency, what you'd need to use is just to 
set up a project yeah and it, it it's actually would be possible to have a local dependency i think it's enabled on this instance and a hub project is also on this instance so it would be possible but uh since it's easier i will be focused more on um, remote dependency so for remote dependency you would need to specify a url and uh, I choose, um, it can be even uh, either uh, SSH authorization or HTTPS, but uh, in this case, I've chosen uh, SSH. And um, when you um, connect in to the code repository, uh, you would need to uh, import credentials in order to, so not every project by default, not every spoke project by default would have access uh, and ability yet to, if it's remote dependency, ability to import uh, the code. So you would need to configure after you write this URL parameter uh, in import credential sections, you will get uh, the URL, which you would need to configure. When you configure, uh, Looker gives you a local uh, SSH key, and then you go to hub code repository and add that SSH key uh, to the hub code repository. After that, uh, you would be able to uh, connect. Um, I've pointed it to master and uh, after, I can obviously uh, use some SHA uh, or tag so you can see in the documentation so it can be branch tag or commit in git dependency repo. Uh, if you point it to master, uh, in that case, uh, Looker will maintain and create by itself manifest log file uh, just to demonstrate uh, which um, which commit uh, you are currently pointed to. And uh, when there are some deployments, you can uh, to the master, uh, to, to the hub, uh, and you need to update yeah, the, pen, the dependencies, pick it up. You can either go to Git Actions, there is a button Update Dependencies, or as I mentioned, Remote Dependency allows you to be alerted about the changes. And let me try to change something, for example, um, I wanted to set project required. I have not uh, enabled here advanced deploy mode or etc. Just push into the remote and after that deploy. So we can see that in project manifest there were some changes. And uh, here uh, alert is usually appears here, but you can see that there are no alerts as for now. Uh, they That's a, a trick that you need to remember. They will appear only after you uh, change something in manifest, hopefully. Yeah, and after that, so let's notice um, 3BF was the last commit, right? And if I update dependencies, it's switched to 3F9. And as a result, uh, the files in uh, imported projects, they are changed. So uh, that's how... Um, That's how we set up the dependency. Uh, after that, after that. So yeah, in modal file, um, you can include uh, both uh, the files that have been created in your project, or you can simply uh, reuse um, the files that were in the hub. For uh, this is uh, example of. Um, uh, refinement. Uh, I'm using the user's view that is uh, that exists in hub model, and I simply would like, for example, to add some label here. Yeah, uh, for the what else have I done here? 
this one is orders items is uh, completely new it exists only in spokes and for orders finance it's uh, extended view kind of a copy with some extensions so i've used uh, the orders view from the hub and i've extended it with applying uh, some additional dimensions and also um, i've used a different view label so if we yeah let's switch to the explore um in the explore uh, 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 i also extended the explore file uh, that's kind of a copy so um we would see um the all, all the tables that were uh, pre-joined to the orders uh exploring hub model and additionally i'm uh, joining order items uh, view that exists only in the spoke and let's see let's see how it looks so as a result uh, you can see this order finance explore here You can see the order items that exists uh, only in the spoke, the orders uh, which um, was inherited yeah, from the hub and that new uh, dimension uh, with which uh, the orders were was extended. And uh, yeah, since I um, during the import, I overridden um, the of overridden the constants, yeah, the GCP project, we should be able to see that um, even though uh, the views uh, were using a different GCP project in the hub, it would uh, query the database uh, that, it's that, that is defined in spoke. So it's kind of repointed. Uh, regarding regarding that where it's repointed or not so um in documentation on hub and spoke you can notice that looker says that um, it's not possible to include a uh, model file um i've tried it yeah and actually uh, technically it's impossible to include model file even in the spoke model file yeah the, the hub model file and when you include it brings you like the model connection yes string from the hub but um it would still require model to be configured for a uh, spoke project. So it does not uh, automatically uh, provide you uh, the access yet to the uh, to, to different connection, unless you specify it in, uh, in projects. So um, that is why um, that is why it's important um, you can specify which models yeah your uh, which connections can can be used by your model that is why it's always important to um, keep separately developers yeah and admins because admins can change the configuration and uh, if we're talking about hub and uh, spoke implementation it's uh, it would be good to, to to not allow developers to to do some admin changes just to have a better control um also if you uh, don't want to so this is just uh, available yeah uh, objects from the hub but if you don't want to reuse some of the objects if they are not necessary for you you don't want to you don't need to make your spoke uh, crowded you can simply not include some of the files and um, as i did for example for users yeah and that's it it will um, it will leave your spoke with uh, only the things that you would need um what else yeah and um after you set up the permissions, yeah, if you, uh, after you started implementing um, everything, you can uh, monitor um, how it's used, yeah, uh, using either Looker system activity, or you can go to admin uh, query page, and you would be able to see um, at, and to make sure that, um, for example, you've got orders, finance, explore, yeah, and um, it was um, 
queried from spoke finance model using these connections because model can have um, more than one allowed connection. So this is uh, auditable and you can check that if you need and to make sure that everything is good. I think that's it from me. I hope that it was um, useful for you and uh, it may um, help you, you know, if you need at some point uh, in time in the future to decide whether at all uh, to move uh, the organization yeah, down uh, the road of this hub and spoke implementation um, because um, like, it, it's flexible, it's scalable, yes, for me, but it does require some uh, diligent setup, yes, some efforts from uh, all the um, business units, yes, some efforts spent on the governance of it and uh, yeah some ongoing maintenance but uh, yeah there are some opportunities and it's always better to have them than not to have uh, now it's uh, yeah I think it's time for Q&A session if you have some questions please don't be shy and ask if I can answer them <laughs> Does any client already use this approach? Um, to some extent, I would say. So project uh, import is um, used. I've seen it uh, on uh, SoftServe. Uh, uh, for, uh, I'm on the SoftServe customer, yeah. Um, I was uh, personally involved in uh, POC when we actually started these um, governance meetings. I was involved there as a technical resource to consult and actually do the POC of this hub and spoke. Unfortunately, that involvement was a short term and I uh, don't know how uh, much that improved, yeah, how many use cases they implemented. Uh, but yeah, the, the project import itself is used. And also, um, you can find uh, in the uh, on YouTube uh, there are a few uh, sessions recorded from other companies and they share their experience how they use it. Uh, I've heard about cases when uh, startup companies are using it or when there is an organization and they need to uh, share the, um, the the models to to their customers. So there may be a different. Uh, use cases for that. And uh, project import, the case that I have not, uh, I just briefly mentioned that it exists. Um, one of the cases you can use the project import is that, uh, for example, you can set up the, uh, it wouldn't be called hub, yeah, but uh, it would be um, a project where you connect, uh, where you have only raw um, views. And uh, as, as you know, in Looker, you can, um, it's much easier to add the descriptions in the first run, yeah, when you are um, um, just um, creating the view from the table. So if there are any updates to the underlying database schema, uh, you would be able to quite uh, easily regenerate it, yeah. And then other projects that um, importing um, the model from um, that project that is simply like a raw view, uh, they would be able to apply some refinements and etc. So that's kind of um, a nice notification that uh, database underlying database schema was actually changed. I just can share, the, sh share that I've used the local import uh, in my previous project. Uh, that was the case where embedded dashboards uh, used, and when you embed dashboard, it always works in production mode, and you cannot use different databases. And that was the case uh, I used, especially to point the model to different databases and allow uh, to embed into multiple instances, application instances. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Guys, other questions? <laughs>